One of the other initiatives we do is priority access. We have a seven day period where stock's on ice. And if you are pre-qualified for that or you self-qualify and then you qualify through our sales agents, you've got first pick, which is a unique opportunity for those people to get in without feeling the pressure of that particular townhouse they want on the corner, just going straight away because it's the best kind of one of the lot. How do you actually sell the sizzle of sustainability? But the reality is that with the new National Construction Code coming into effect and just the way the market's going, there's a growing percentage of customers that just expect it. And that's a positive thing because we are going to have better quality homes, more sustainable homes, your operating costs, as you say. But it's just, I think we've all got a bit of a responsibility to deliver those type of homes that are more future-proof. So I'm here with Tyson Burkett, Development Director here at Luma Sunshine North. Great to see you, my friend. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. We're out here at Sunshine North. I've just had a bit of a look around the project. Geez, you guys are making tons of progress. Do you want to share a bit about the project? Yeah, it's full steam ahead out at Luma. Three stages, of circa 300 townhouses out here at Luma. And in terms of the location, we're on St Albans Road in between Guinnefer and Albion train stations. And we're about two and a half k's from Sunshine train station and the little CBD. In addition, we've got the Sunshine Hospital, the Victorian University Sunshine Campus around the corner. So a really well-connected and located site off the Western Ring Road. In terms of wider context and what's going on in the area, we're in the the Sunshine Priority Precinct, which has got a, a vision for 2050 in terms of population and activity. And there'll be a lot of investment, I think, in the, the CBD of the West, it's being termed, in like this kind of exciting journey that the area is going to go on in the, in the next couple of years or the next couple of decades. And one of the beauties of this site is this is directly opposite the Sunshine Energy Park. But Brimbank City Council's got a vision for this this space, which is directly across the road, as I said. And that is open space sporting facilities. And it's a really big draw card. And it's not only the scale of it is not local, it's actually a bit of a regional draw card. And so that's really exciting having those things within really close proximity of the project. Yeah, totally. I mean, even just coming out here, it took just over 20 minutes to get here from the city and I was amazed at just the convenience in terms of accessing the highway straight off. And, you know, we can see the train station, which is definitely far enough away not to hear it, but super close in terms of like unlocking that convenience. Yeah, electric scooter and you're there in two minutes. Um, <laughs> or a 15-minute walk, which is what our marketing brochures have. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a fantastic location. And currently the status of the project, as I said, it's circa 300 townhouses. Stage one, 86, is sold out, which is a great result. Stage two was launched to market, started this year is 85. Saw Constructions has been awarded the contract on both Stage 1 and 2, and they've been a really good builder partner for DV. In terms of product mix at the moment, we range from one to four bedders, and the one bedders are kind of in the mid fours, and the, the four bedders are the high eights. They're the price points currently, and obviously it's interesting watching that space and seeing where the market's going. There's not too many competitors in the immediate vicinity, so we are in a, a very established suburb being Sunshine and Sunshine North. So there's a lot of older housing stock and I think that's where that diversity in product and choices from one bedrooms all the way up to four is really compelling for someone wanting to stay in the location in the area and get a turnkey product that they can move straight into in a little community. And I think one of the advantages of these kind of townhouse projects at scale being nearly 300 is essentially it is that it's creating a little community within established areas and most of the development Victoria townhouse projects are all really well located middle ring surplus sites. So this site we're on today is next City West Water headquarters and depot. And it's really interesting seeing it come to life and, and provide housing choice for the consumer. Well, when I arrived, there was someone here in the display. I think I've just heard someone else just arrive. Is it local people? Is it a mix of investors, owner occupiers? Who are you finding that is responding to the project? It's really mixed. There's, there is a couple of investors who see the potential in the location, and they're actually already reside in this in the in the west of Melbourne and inner west. Yeah, there's a real opportunity for people that are kind of renting in the inner inner west, so set in Kingsville, etc. Those kind of infill areas that want to get into something new, they can't quite afford that locality. So Sunshine's that one little next step out. But we're not talking west as in Tarnit, et cetera. It's kind of like a really nice middle ground. But yeah, I think first home buyers generally in this market is a little bit difficult for them. One thing that we have implemented in the past at Luma when we first launched was actually a really fantastic initiative in terms of reducing barriers to first home buyers and purchases generally. So we actually had an arrangement where we had a 2.5% deposit required with wow. a balance 2.5% due six months thereafter. So we staggered the deposit, a minimum 5%, obviously, but the whole thing was about reducing barriers to entry for the market. 
And that was that generated a lot of inquiry and it was genuinely a really good initiative that we were able to secure approval internally. And I think that's touching on the DV brand and advantages. That's something that other developers out there kind of aren't doing at this point in time in, in kind of what's going on in property market generally. Being able to offer a, a 2.5, 2.5 staggered deposit was really kind of landed well with the customer. And it's something that we had in place and, and we'll look to have in place in the future again. I mean, you know, we obviously are in a bit of a housing affordability crisis and certainly a supply crisis. So it's great to see practical solutions that kind of help stock get to market in good, well-located areas. And I do like the fact that our townhouses as well, obviously we're a predominantly apartments-based platform, but when we feel like it still has that urban feel and that amenity surrounding it, we really integrate that into our offering as well. And I think having a look at some of the, the project earlier today, I was really impressed with how they look, and it's all looking pretty slick. One of the things with Development Victoria is we have some policy positions that we like to achieve. We have sustainability policies, we have affordability policies, and, and we try to put them into our projects. So one of the things from a sustainability perspective is we've got some minimum specifications. So we've got seven-star homes in stage two. We have battery storage, we have solar panels, we have EV charging, double glazing, a lot of those little additional sustainability specs that the customers, once they get their head around it and understand it, they really appreciate. And some, I think, come in preconceived about what sustainability things they want or, or don't want. And then when they go through the journey on the sales floor, they actually understand the benefits of having some of those things in their turnkey product. Yeah, I think with the sustainability, it can be tricky to kind of understand it from the consumer standpoint as far as them trying to get their head around what does it actually mean. But usually it means healthier homes that have got better ventilation and air filtration. It's about having lower cost energy bills. And of course, it does have a positive impact on the planet, but it also has a positive impact in terms of the operating costs of the home as well. Definitely. And that's always the challenge between sales, marketing, development (laughs) teams is how do you actually sell the sizzle of sustainability? But the reality is that with the new National Construction Code coming into effect and just the way the market's going, there's a growing percentage of customers that just expect it. And it's just kind of where where things are going. And that's a positive thing because we are going to have better quality homes, more sustainable homes, your operating costs, as you say. But it's just, I think we've all got a bit of a responsibility to deliver those type of homes in the future that are a bit more future-proof. It just strikes me as kind of one of those projects where when you've got a good product mix. It's not too far out. It's connected to the existing amenity. It's well-priced. I think there's a lot to kind of stack up and particularly when you add the Development Victoria brand that has the trust. And as you say, you're able to do things a little bit differently from a customer centricity standpoint with offers like the two and a half percent. It's like bringing that stock to market is kind of what we need right now. 100%. And one of the other initiatives we do is priority access. So that's all about affordable outcomes. So what we do and admittedly in a, in a really hot market is it's a it's a fantastic initiative but we'll go out with a priority access period so for seven days prior to a market release it's basically the stocks on ice if you're a qualified moderate income earner which there's specific income bands to meet that and that's all about serviceability of your mortgage but that's not a dv thing that's a government definition of what is a and a moderate income earner but we have a seven-day period where stock's on ice, and if you're pre-qualified for that or you know you self-qualify and then you, you qualify through our sales agents, you, you've got first pick, which is a unique opportunity for those people to get in without feeling the pressure of that particular townhouse they want on the corner, kind of just going straight away because it's the, the best kind of one in the lot. Whether it's an owner-occupier, first home buyer, downsizer or the like, those same kind of drivers exist where you want to be close to public transport you want to be close to jobs. We, as you said, you've got Victoria University, you've got Sunshine Hospital, you've got access to public transport. If you choose to drive, it's right by the highway. It's a very manageable commute relative to kind of the master plan communities, which are a bit further out. And I think those fundamental drivers of this being a great place to live are consistent, whether you're considering this as an investment or, or somewhere for your home. Definitely. And I think master plan communities are fantastic and the really well executed ones have a lot of that amenity and those draw cards within them. But I think that's a consumer choice. You either want that, and there's various reasons why you'd want that. But I think more and more people are going to turn to townhouses, middle ring, these really great little communities when townhouses are done at scale, like in the one, two, three hundreds, because it's a bit more of a, it's less ad hoc. It's actually a holistic approach that the developer and Development Victoria take to these types of projects. 
Well, it's been awesome to catch up, Tyson. Appreciate your time, my friend. Thanks for coming out. Have an awesome day.